Welcome to Turning Permission Center Church Online. Happy Sabbath. I'm Pastor Arnett. We have a very special message for you today. We'll be recasting the last sermon done by Senior Pastor Elder Michael F. Horn on December the 11th, 2021. God bless you. Up in prayer as well. And we just thank God for this opportunity to come together once again. We invite everyone to kneel with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed privilege you've given unto us to come to the house of worship once again. Lord, we don't take it lightly, but we count it a privilege and all joy just to be in thy presence, fellowship and worshiping with other believers. Lord, we know of you who watched over us, who protected us and kept the death angel away. It was you, Lord God, who kept us safe and did not allow us to get that emergency phone call or in our loved ones, be injured or harmed, or even the death angel to enter into our ranks. So we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of salvation. For it's our relationship with you that makes the difference, Lord. We all face different trials and situations and injustices and hardships and disappointment. But it's because of our love and our faith in thee, knowing that you are all wise God, knowing you are ever present help, knowing you are all powerful, knowing that you know the end from the beginning, that gives us peace in the midst of confusion, in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of injustice and pain and suffering. We can still have joy because we know that you are strong and mighty in battle. And we know you are all wise God. So we know if it comes upon us, you have permitted it. And if you permitted it, you have already come up with a way out for us. So help us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And let us walk with you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for our church family. We pray your blessings upon each and every member of the body of Christ throughout the land. But we especially lift up Turning Point Mission Center Church. We thank you for our leaders, each of our elders and their families. We thank you for our deacons and deaconesses and their families. We thank you for our sisters and brothers in Christ. We thank you for each member that's a part of this family and those yet to come. We thank you, Lord. We lift up our children in a special way. For the children of this generation, Lord, have so much temptation and so many things coming against them. But we want to thank you, Lord, for the children and household of faith here at Turning Point, those that press their way to be here today and those that are not. We lift them up to you, Lord. Pray that you'll protect them in the schools, protect them going and coming. And, Lord, give them a mind to trust and to obey you. I know that their parents are diligent working with them, teaching them right from wrong. So, Father, help them to make the right choices because we all have an opportunity to make choices and our decision has consequences. So bless our young people, Lord. Cover them, protect them. And we lift up parents that you will help us as parents and grandparents and as pastors and leaders to be the leaders you're calling for in the last and evil days, to stand for righteousness and to teach our children by precepts and examples and help them to write and live out the word of truth. Lord, let us plant a deep-rooted foundation of your word in their hearts so that they may live out those truths as well as us. Lift up all those that are sick. We pray that you touch those that are on the bed of affliction. Touch their bodies, Lord. We pray to those that have been inflicted with the COVID-19 virus, either one of the variants. We pray that you will bless and heal we pray also, Father, that those who have not uh, taken that vaccine, that you will move in their hearts, and if they do not have any impending health problem, they'll be able to take it. And, Lord, let us all be protected and covered. Lord, for those who are eligible for boosters, let them take that booster vaccine. And we just lift this nation up to you, Lord. So much turmoil and destruction, wickedness, and evil is going forth. 
And Lord, we know that you are in control and we are not confused. Your word lets us know these evil days must come in order for you to come back. But you also let us know that you will not forsake us. So even as bleak and even wickedness uh, and deception uh, this world may become, Satan using people in high places to do things that are totally wrong and going against your laws first, but also the laws of the land. But we also know that you're still God. So help us, Lord, to pray for those who are in leadership and to pray for those who are not uh, doing right about your people. We pray that you will give them wisdom, that you will also give them a heart to do what is right. And Lord, if they're bent on doing wrong, help us to stay on a straight and narrow path and be ambassadors for you. We lift up each of our leaders in the household of faith, in our communities, in our city, state, and in our nation government, in our national government. We pray for our president, our vice president. We also, Lord Jesus, pray for the elderly, pray for those that's neglected or abused. We pray for this, uh, those that are on the bed of affliction, and we also pray for those incarcerated. We pray for healing in the land, healing of the mind, healing of the soul, and healing of the body. And we thank you for this opportunity to come to worship you today. We invite your Holy Spirit to have his way. Come, Lord Jesus, just saturate this place today. Give us a word on high. Touch your man, sir, and Lord. Anoint him. Speak through him and to him. And Lord, let our hearts, prepare our hearts to receive what you have for us today. And Lord, we pray for the community you planted us in. And Lord, if we fail to act, fail not to grant. We lift up all those that are on the bed. Of, uh, 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 we lift up those that's in a place of uncertainty. Uh, we pray that you will let them uh, make a conscious decision to accept this, accept you as our personal Savior. And we just want to thank you for our loved ones, our parents, our siblings, each of our children. And we thank you for this leader. And continue to bless as we go forth. In your son Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Remain standing for our scripture reading for today. Our scripture coming from the book of Psalms. Psalms 68, verse 4 and 5. That's Psalm 68, verse 4 and 5. No, 1 through 5. I'm sorry, 1 through 5. Our scripture reading comes from Psalms 138, verses 1 through 5. That's Psalms 138, verses 1 through 5. Give you a minute to get there. Everybody have it? Amen. The word of God says, and this is the Psalm of David says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. In the day when I cried, thou answerest me and strengthening me with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Verse 5 all together. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And now we actually prepare your hearts for the word today. It comes from our senior pastor, Elder Michael of On. Hear ye, hear the word of God as his servant come forth in his own way. Praise the Lord. Uh, 
as we stand. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so grateful for this day. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to enter into your presence. We come with thanksgiving and praise to your holy name. I know we're a little quiet today, Lord God, but I trust that we are rejoicing in our hearts because you're still good. Yes. You're still mighty. Yes. And you are an awesome God. Yes. Lord, we give you all the praise through our ups and our downs, through our hardships, Lord God. And even the good times, Lord, we just say thank you, thank Lord, you, Lord, for each and every one. You are so merciful. You are so kind to us, Lord God. You are better to us than we are to ourselves. And Lord God, I thank you that you continue to toil with us, Lord thank God. You, Lord. Thank Even you, Lord. when we fall short of your glory, Lord God, you still love us, Lord. You still uphold us, Lord. You still, Lord, undergird us, Lord, so that we will not stumble and fall. And I'm so grateful for thank that. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord, I thank you that I was able to walk in this building today, Lord, Lord God. Oh, Jesus, it's been a hard week. Oh, Lord, I know we all been going through some things, Lord God. But in the midst of it all, Lord, you have been good, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. I can't think of anything better to do than to praise and worship you, Lord God. Almighty God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my strength, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my mind, Lord God. You're still regulating it all, and I, I'm grateful, Lord God. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, and I'm just praying, Father, that as we stand before your people today, Lord, I pray that you will hide me behind your cross so that you and you alone will be seen and heard from this desk. And, Lord, give us a word that's going to bless us that's going to magnify your holy name in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our God. We do pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 3. Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 3. I will be reading in your hearing a very... A familiar passage of scripture Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3 we know that Jeremiah was considered to be the weeping prophet and uh, they called him that because the people of God really hated Jeremiah amen but and and it oftentimes caused him uh, to weep and mourn and be sad and discouraged Amen. But, you know, Jeremiah kept on doing what God told him to do. Oh, yeah, he wanted to give up. He wanted to throw his hands up and say, that's enough. I done had enough. I can't take no more. And, but, but God encouraged him, and he kept on doing what God said do. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. The word of God says, the Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, yea. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, loving kindness, with loving kindness, have I drawn thee. Our topic today for just a few moments is inseparable. Inseparable. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. inseparable as we look at verse uh, the the verse that we just read over in Jeremiah chapter uh, 31 verse 3 there is a word that stands out to me 
and that word is loving kindness loving kindness you, you know when I uh, was growing up especially in my teen years when I was in high school I had two friends that were very dear to me and those two friends and I seem to always be together. Have y'all ever known anybody like that or had a relationship with somebody and when you saw one, you saw the other one more than likely? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's the way we were. Uh, one of my friends was Reggie and the other one was Walter. And they often would even call us the Three Stooges uh, because we were just as crazy as the Three Stooges. But we were tight. We were tight like the Three Stooges. And when you saw one, more than likely, you was going to see the other. And we were like that all the way through high school. And you oftentimes think that, okay, when you are so close to somebody and you have such a strong relationship, that you are going to be that way with them forever. You know, that you, you just don't, especially when you're young like that, you just can't even imagine not being around your friends. But as we got older and we entered into adulthood, we went off to college and we began our own uh, professional pursuits and everything, time and circumstances and distance separated us. And we wound up uh, in different places doing different things and we were not together like we were when we were in high school. Mm -hmm. But I thank God when I look back on those very fun days of how we enjoyed the presence of each other. You know, I, I even think about Pastor Arnett and I, and usually when you see her, you're gonna see me, or when you see me, you're gonna see her. But you know, we are, we are mortals. That means that we are capable of dying and one day, the day might come before the Lord gets here, that we are separated. It won't be by choice, but we, it will be because it was out of our control. There are people that have lost family members, loved ones, children, relatives, yeah. friends. They, you, you are separated. Uh, you, you thought you would be together forever. But God allowed you to become separated. Sometimes separation is actually for your good. Because we can attach ourselves to things and people that get in the way of us really being a blessing to the Lord. In other words, we put them before we put God. But I thank God that there are some things in this word that yes, remind yes, us yes, that yes. they are inseparable. They are going to always be together. All right, let me get down to the meat of what I'm talking about. I know we got started late, but we're going to end on time today. The word that we're looking at today is loving kindness. And this word is mentioned over 26 times in the King James Version of the Bible. Okay. Now, this is a compound word mm -hmm. because it's made up of two words. That's right. That's it's right. made up of the word loving uh -huh. and it's made up of the word kindness. Right. This is from the Hebrew word esed. And this word means to be loving and kind to God and to our fellow man. Praise the Lord. Praise now, here's the big picture. In our day and time, man has come up with his own definition of loving kindness. He has separated the two words. And even in the body of Christ, we find people that exercise love My Lord. or kindness. Okay. In other words, you can tell somebody that I love you, but you are hateful to them. 
You are mean to them. You treat them any kind of way. And then there are others that say that practice being kind. They'll do anything they can to help a person except love them. I, I know I'm talking to the choir right now and y'all y'all don't experience this and never have experienced this. But but you know um, the, we we ha we live in a time now when people say, "Oh, I love everybody," uh -huh. but they are as mean on, and hateful on, as they can be. Come on, walls, help me out today. Help me out. They are mean and hateful, yet and still they call themselves Christians, and they sit in their edifices on Sunday mornings, and they proclaim that they are the children of the Lord yet and still they are in the most segregated place that they can be on earth because the church has become segregated the people of God don't look beyond color don't look beyond hairstyles don't look beyond economic status don't look beyond social um, um, uh, levels and all of that the church should be a melting pot of everybody showing loving kindness yes. to everybody. Yes. 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 But instead, if you're not my denomination, come on now. Come on. Yes. Hello. Yes, Lord. If you don't believe like I believe, mm -hmm. if you don't eat what I eat, if you drink some stuff that make you kind of wobble sometimes, then I don't have no love for you. And I'm certainly not going to be kind to you. I'm going to put you down every chance I get because you need to be like me. Who in the world are you? Who are you? I'm not just talking about in the audience. I'm talking about from the pulpit to the dough. Yes, yes, yes. God requires us to have loving kindness towards everybody. Yes. And then even in Jeremiah, he said, look, it is with loving kindness yes. that I have drawn you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. We got empty seats because of the lack of loving kindness. Now, this is the kind of kindness I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kindness that makes you go out of the way. See, some of us will be kind as long as it's not inconvenient. As long as I don't have to burn a little more gas than I normally would. As long as I don't have to put another mile or two on my journey as long as I can make sure that after I have helped you I still got a plenty left oh, oh, oh y'all do y'all want to hear this today yes. can I go on today yes. God mentions loving kindness 26 times in the Bible because he expects his children to demonstrate loving kindness. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Loving kindness is that kind of loving and kindness that takes you out of your comfort zone. That is not out of your abundance, Come on now. but it comes out of your necessity. Woo! <laughs> Say that now. Uh, what do you mean by that, preacher? Uh, what what I'm saying is that it comes out of even though you just have enough for yourself that you still take out of your necessity your necessary need to be a blessing to somebody else and you trust God to make up the difference and those two words are inseparable they are interlocked with each other 
And if you're going to love God, you've got to be loving and you've got to be kind. And we should not run from opportunities to demonstrate loving kindness. You know, I, I started out by saying in some churches that, you know, loving kindness is not demonstrated because people are not like us. But here's my question. What's our excuse? When I look out there in the audience, we all got either the same weave or we got the same skin color. We got the same big noses and, and lips. What's our excuse for not showing and demonstrating loving kindness towards one another? Yet, we got one foot in heaven and the other one on a banana peel. You ready? You ready to be translated? You ready to make heaven your home? But we hate folk right here in the church. And, 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 and I'm not talking about the kind of hate that make you want to drive a nail in their heart. I guess. I guess. But I'm talking about that kind of hate that makes you ignore each other. When you see somebody and you know somebody, even the Holy Ghost done revealed to you that somebody going through something and then you act like you don't even care. Where's your loving kindness? Over in the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 35 the Bible says this but love ye your enemies and do good and lend hoping and lend hoping for nothing again in other words we should be willing to give and to help not expecting anything back and then some of us get in our niches and okay I like you you like me, you do for me, I'll do for you. You give me this, I'll give you that. It's a, trans, it's a transactional relationship. That's what it is. It's, it's based on transaction. What you do for me, I'll do for you. Where you invite me, I'll invite you. Y'all don't get it, do you? But here, Jesus is letting them know that we got to love everybody, even our enemies. And we are to do good for people that we know don't mean us any good. Why? Because we are Christians. And he goes on to say in Luke 6, 35, And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful. Oh, I'll help them because they act like they all this and, and, and they are all that. And, 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 and that's why I don't do what I do. And some of the very people that God is waiting to see if you will bless and help on the very people that will never say thank you. Sometimes we even do our own children like that. You, know, you give them lunch money. What you gonna say? Y'all ever did that? Y'all, you, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. But what if they don't say thank you? What if they don't even have a thankful spirit within them? Do you know God still requires you to do what you can to help them, to take care of them, to nurture them? Not only your children, but the stranger that is within your gates. Not only the stranger that is within your gates, but the stranger outside of your gates. 
anybody that has a need that God has blessed you to provide and sustain and help them, God requires you to show them loving kindness. If number 45 walked in this door today, And we know he hates us. We know that he doesn't care for us. Amen. But do you know that if he had a need that God blessed us to provide, God requires his people to do what you can for those that are in need. Genuine kindness is our response to God's love. Some people are not kind to others because they have not accepted the fact that God loves them. In other words, they feel, feel unloved. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand as we feel unloved because we all go through that at some point in time. Colossians 3, 12 and 14 says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, oh, yeah. kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, yeah. forbearing one another, putting up with one another. Yeah. I know I step on your toes. I know I put you in that place sometimes where you are not comfortable. I know sometimes I get on your everlasting nerve, the last one you got. But God said, you still got to forbear me. Just like I have to forbear you. And forgiving one another. There are going to be a lot of seats that are going to be vacant in heaven because we would not let go of something in our past. We would not let go, we would not forgive, we would not say, okay, that happened, but I'm moving on because I am determined to make heaven my home. There are gonna be some people that's gonna miss heaven because they continue to hate on others. They are unforgiving. And the person that they got a problem with don't even know it. And certainly not even dwelling on it. They don't move on to the next chapter. And God got you stuck in a wreck repeating the same thing over and over and oh come on somebody say hallelujah with me right now repeating the same thing over and over again because you will not let go let go and let God have it and if you feel like you've been done wrong if you feel like somebody done mistreated you if you feel like things are not the way that they should be Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Let him work it out. Let me ask you. You're working it out. What has it gotten you? What has it gotten you? It hasn't got you nowhere. Hasn't got you nothing. Except heartache. Disappointment. High blood pressure. Stress anxiety and the person you hating on is going on about their business then in verse 14 of Colossians 3 the boy where it says and above all these things put on charity and that word charity means love you got to put love on see so many of us want love to be something that we feel. <laughs> All right. Want to feel it. Oh, I feel like I love you. You make me feel so good. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Some of y'all don't went back in the day there. 
But love is something that you got to put on. In, in other words, love has to be a part of your attire. And you know, when you put on love, when you put on God's character of love, yes, 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 yes. people recognize you Hallelujah. by your love. That's right, that's let, right. let, 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 me, let me make that clear. When you enlist in the military, one of the first things they do is hand you a what? A uniform. <laughs> they, they hand you a uniform. And that uniform is based on which branch of the uh, military you're in. They don't give somebody in the Navy an Army uniform. They don't give someone in the Air Force a Marine uniform. Amen. Amen. Your uniform matches the branch of the military you're in. That's right. That's right. God is saying to us that we yes. Yes. should all have the same uniform in the army of God. And that uniform is love. Jesus even dis told his disciples that they will know you right. by your love. Amen. Amen. And he also lets us know as we come to the conclusion that loving kindness are both a part of the uniform of the body of Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. Romans 12, 14 and 15 says, Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Kindness is one of the characteristics of God's people. And we show empathy towards one another. When you're going through, I'm going through. Amen. When, when you hit a barricade or a block in your life, I feel like I'm blocked too until you get your release. That's the way the body of Christ is. That's the way God intended for us to be. We are to show empathy towards one another. Loving kindness towards one another. And until we can show it to the folk in the church, what you think we're going to do about the folk outside of the church? Because we all supposed to have on love here in the church. How are we going to relate to those outside of the church? Loving kindness. Two words that are inseparable in God's sight. Don't separate them. And please. Let us make sure that we're doing all we can to love and to be kind to one another. As we pray, Father, thank you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness that has drawn each one of us. You've demonstrated your loving kindness all down through the years. And I pray that you will continue to do so. Lord, have mercy upon Bless us, Lord. We have several members that are out sick today. Lord, bless them. You know what they're facing, what they're going through. And I pray, Father, that you will have mercy upon us and bless, Lord, and heal and deliver. And, Lord, save us, Lord. Please save us and prepare us, Lord, for your kingdom. And help us, Lord, to demonstrate loving